Good morning guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the shed where we have a, another repair job on the workbench here. It's early in the morning. I normally don't talk to anyone after, until I've had two coffees. Uh, so this is my second, I should get better. Uh, I'm doing this this morning before I go to work because it needs to be done. It's big and I need it out of here and I need to get back on to clearing out all the other stuff of mine. So this job, I'll show you what we've got here. So this job is a, a countertop or bench top uh, fridge or salad cooler or something like that. It has a, a like a glass perspex type cover go over the top. Obviously keeps things cool. It's a uh, Borelli. I don't know how old it is. And the story is it came with the the um, coffee van that my girls bought. And we recently did a generator checkout and the generator worked out well. This one apparently has been plugged in and nothing happens. Now, I don't know anything about these things. I've never worked on one of them. I've never really even seen one other than I've probably bought something out of one in a shop and just not paid any attention to it. So the fact that it has no power at all and no life at all uh, is probably a good thing because major problems are sometimes much easier to find than a, than a uh, more specific issue. So... We'll plug it in. I'll get my uh, isolation transformer out here. We'll plug it in and we'll just do a few checks. We'll probably have to remove this end panel here and trace the voltage into where it goes. The compressor was rattling a bit, but that's pretty normal on some fridges. Um, and maybe there is some issues because it's been um, in a trailer, in a food van and been jolted around for most of its life. There might be some poor connections. I don't know. Let's work through this process together. Um, my girls and everyone else I know are always bringing stuff to me to fix, which I like. I mean, it's part of my duty as a dad, but but as you know, I bring home jobs from the shop all the time just because I like to fix as much as I can and stop things from being thrown out. And it never stops me that I don't know much about it. We can work it out as we go. Okay, let's power it up through the oscillation transformer and see if we have any life at all. I take it that's just an on-off. Nothing on little display. I can't hear anything. It does appear to be totally dead. All right, we'll see if this end cover comes off and we'll check that voltage is actually getting into the, the machine for a start because maybe it's had a squashed cord. That's probably the first step. So I'm guessing the screws are hidden behind these plastic caps. They'd have to be there for some reason. Oh yeah, there's a Phillips head screw in there, so this whole panel should come off. Okay, all the screws are dropping straight down as I undo them. I better re-magnetise my screwdriver end. Now we'll try it. I've still dropped down. Okay, we have access. Let's round up all our screws. That's why it didn't work. They're stainless steel. They're going to be tricky to put back in. Now a couple of screws this end and this top cover should come off too. Now we have good access. Okay, it's pretty neat and organized in here. It's not overly cluttered. We have the refrigeration compressor, little control box down the back there. I'm not sure what this white box is, but it looks like that's where the mains goes into first. So we'll take that cover off and test for voltage there. We have the backs of the switches down here, quite accessible, and the fan and um, the radiator type. What do they call it, a condenser? A heat exchanger, something. That's the radiator part of the fridge. Um, so the refrigeration hopefully is all okay. It should have nothing to do with the electrical side of things. So I reckon we will, now that white tube thing will probably be a capacitor. We'll take this cover off and just test if we've got voltage coming into that little box thing. Okay, the power's off again, just to be extra safe, but it is through our isolation transformer, so. It would be pretty safe anyway. 
just the one screw was there or is there another one? Oh, there's one at the bottom. How are we going to get in there? Okay, we might be able to take the fan off this. I think it's only two screws. Oh, and the sticker wasn't really holding anything. It just slots in at the bottom, so that was easy to get to. Fan looks clean, runs smoothly. All right, can we get to that screw back in there? I think we might have a chance now. Yep, that'll do the trick. Oh, I'll tell you, these stainless steel screws are a pain. You uh, sometimes really appreciate a magnetic screwdriver. That's got it. Right, now will this cover come off? Okay, it's just a junction box. That's all right, but at least we can test voltages there. Right, we're set up to test some voltages now. We have the power back on. So let's, the easiest access here is the neutral and mains on the junction box and if you can see the meter there yep we have near enough to 240 volts so our mains is coming in let's just check that we have a good earth earth pin to the chassis yep that's good okay so everything's fine up to that junction box from there the mains goes off to the switch so let's check that we have power at the switch. A little awkward to get to in here. Yep, we have 240 volts going into the switch. Actually, the switch I thought had a, should have a light in it, like a an LED, and it's not lighting up. So, Or probably not an LED at 240 volts. It'll be like a neon globe or something. So maybe it's a faulty switch. Oh, I'm going to have to unplug those and check them, and then we can check the continuity of the switch. So the power's back off. Let's pull the terminals off the switch. Now these are the output from the switch that go to another little control panel. Actually, now that those are off, let's see if we've got power on the, the downside of the switch. No, nothing. So maybe we do have a dodgy switch. We'll have to pull it out and have a look. So the mains input go to the base of the switch. Remember that? The bottom two terminals. And we'll see if we can prise this switch out without doing any damage. It's always tricky getting these switches out with these just these plastic little flexy things on each side. Because if you don't slide them through neat, they tend to gouge. And then you can never get the bloody switch out without breaking them off. We're nearly there. Nice of them to put some holes in the right spot here, wasn't it? Maybe that's what they're for. Except I can't see what I'm doing. Ah, come on, Winley, yeah? There we go. She's out without any damage. Be nice if it would, the switch was the only problem. Let's just check, see if we have any continuity. Okay, so let's put it, turn the switch on. Uh, it should connect top to bottom. Whoops, stop spinning. So that's on, and the other side should do the same. Uh huh. Nothing. So it's connecting one side but not the other. Let's try it back in the off position just to make sure we got it right. So there's no connection. No connection. Let's make sure it doesn't go the other way. So that's totally isolated every terminal terminal in off. We turn it on. We have a connection that side. Nothing that side. There shouldn't be anything across ways. So we're connecting one wire, but we're not connecting the other wire. So there's our fault. I wonder if we can fix it or whether we have to buy a new switch. Don't know if we can even get into it. Let's take this cover off. Yeah, we, well, we might be able to get into it, but we might never be able to get it back together again. Still, if, um, if it's no good anyway, and we're replacing it anyway, let's have a go at fixing it. We mightn't even have to order one. Now, just before we delve into the deep psychological problems of this switch, I've got the book here and it has a little circuit diagram. Uh, and it does show the power switch switching both wires. So it's a double pole switch and clearly the thing's not going to work just with one wire connected and the other one not. So definitely a problem with the switch. Uh, we can just confirm that though by connecting the wires up. So I'll just put some test leads on this wire. 
and we'll turn it on and see if it bursts into life. I've got, what have we got disconnected? Only really the cover off the junction box and the fan we can actually drop back into where it sits. There, so everything else is right to go. So I'll just put some test leads uh, connecting these wires up, essentially bypassing the switch, and we'll see if it runs. And I just turned the power switch on and we have life in our little control module. Uh, I guess that's 26 degrees. It's quite warm here. That would be Celsius, so maybe that's right. Uh, the compressor doesn't appear to be working, though. Maybe this needs to be set or turned on down at this control unit. Okay, I just had to play around with the buttons and you have to hold the set in uh, and then you can select the temperature and then hold the power button in and it seems to be operating. I think that's 8 degrees I've set it for. Uh, and the fan's certainly running. So I don't know if the compressor is. It might be very quiet. But at least we have some sort of life. And I guess we can see if it gets cold. Uh, I think I can just hear the compressor running. And it feels like... Yeah, it's too early to tell. We'll leave it for a little bit and see if it starts to get cold. But uh, that'd be awesome if it's just a switch problem. Easy to fix. Just had another look at the book, and it's got a troubleshooting section. And under the fault, appliance not working, the probable causes, the unit not switched on, the plug and lead are damaged, the fuse blown in the plug, well, we don't have fuses in our plugs in Australia, the power supply was good, internal wiring fault, and the action is to call your agent or qualified technician, but they left out, or consult your dad who likes to tinker with stuff. Ah, must have been a misprint. Woohoo, good news, look, we've got frost. So it's starting to get quite cold, which is great. It means the compressor's good and it's nice and quiet. Uh, actually, I guess you'd want something like this on a countertop being nice and quiet, but yeah, you've only really got the noise of that fan. Okay, so we've solved the problem. Now we need to fix the problem. Come with me, switch. Okay, let's see if we can get into the switch. It looks like that top cover just presses on somehow. Okay, that doesn't really look removable. I can see a little neon globe in there. So, right, rather than that, let's see, get the whole rocker out because I think we flex the side. We'll get our watch case opening tool. And we should be able to flex the side out to get the rocker out. Now be careful that we don't get springs fly everywhere. And get this side clear if we can. There we go. Whoops. Sounded like little parts falling around. Okay. The terminals look a little bit of a mess there. So there's a little spring. And that one's got a ball on the end of it. So there's some grease that's holding the spring in. So that's okay. Let's get our little point here. Okay, so we have a spring there. And this one has a little ball on the end of it. And the spring there. So that part's okay. The little ball is going to be the... I guess it's... Oh, that's going to rock a little contact back and forward. If we can, we'll put that back on top of the spring. I don't want to get grease all over my mat here. So that's still okay. Right, where's the other little ball? It's in here. Covered in grease still. So I'll put that one back into that spring. There's quite a lot of grease in here. Too much, I would have thought. But that's still okay. Now let's delve into the bottom of here. If we get a focus... What's going on with these terminals? All right, let's take these bits out carefully. So that looks a bit burnt. Maybe. So the silver contacts that one end, that looks okay. Uh, and it connects to the contact down there. So it's just basically two rockers. 
and there's the other one. They certainly don't look burnt, the contacts look great. Looks a bit dodgy there, but I think that's actually just the grease. Yeah, it's not burnt. It's just the nickel plates worn off the copper. A little bit excess, a bit, bit of excess grease around. And nothing actually looks damaged. Okay, I'm just going to clean this out with IPA because there's a lot of grease around this terminal here. It's possible that it's arced a bit and created a bit of a layer of gunk that stopped the connection. But the terminals themselves don't look pitted. There's no melted plastic. There's no broken parts. And I think we'll just give that a really good clean up. Spray a bit of air in there to clean it out now. And that looks as good as new in there. So we'll, we'll assemble these little plates. Yeah, there was definitely black stuff on them. So maybe the grease has just dried out and actually formed an insulating layer. Let's make sure those terminals are clean. And we'll place them back in the bottom and they should locate I need the tweezers for this. Okay, I've got those plates back in there now and they're clean and they pivot nicely. So that should be alright. It, it won't need grease anywhere except where these balls roll in the middle. So I think there was just excessive grease in there. I'll clean this up just a little. But we'll still leave the little ball bearings with some lubrication on them. And we'll see if we can put it back together without losing any parts anywhere. Okay, I can't tip the bottom piece up or the contacts are going to fall out. But hopefully these little ball bearings will stay in place if we do it this way. Okay, sorry I didn't show you that on camera because I had to get it close to me and push down at the right angle and cross my fingers and cross my eyes and, and it clipped into place and hopefully everything stayed in its right positions. So we'll get the meter on that and check it. Okay, that's off, that's on. How are we going to go? No, we've got nothing on that side. No, neither side are working. Oh, maybe that's off. Is that on? Uh-huh. Well, that's working. I'm just having a bit of a feel that I may have put that switch around the wrong way because isn't one on and zero off? So I think I've got it together and it works, but I've actually put the toggle around the wrong way. The rocker around the wrong way. All right, I better fix that, otherwise people will be confused. I got the switch all fixed up, and it's now plugged in for a test. It looks like is that green light on? So the light's on, but the switch is in off position. So that's odd. But let's turn the switch on, see what happens with the actual unit. There we go. So the switch works. Oh, the light's still on. Maybe that's on all the time to tell you that there's power to the machine and it's only turned on, obviously, when it's turned off, the display goes out. So, yeah, anyway, at least the switch works. It's all good. Um, it's clipped back together well. All the wiring's good. I think we're right to reassemble. It's the next morning and I'm just putting the last of this back together before I go to work. I've had to resort to some masking tape folded over so it's sticky both sides to try and get these screws in because they're almost impossible to get in there without it, given that they're not magnetic. But this seems to be working okay. Once they're started, they're fine. Yep, won't be long now. We'll have it all back together. 
All back together now, running nicely. It's down to 11.3 degrees, 11.2. I've only had it on for probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Uh, and it's about 22 or something this morning. Nice and frosty. So uh, looking good. Needs a little bit of a clean up. I have safety tested the machine. It all passes nicely. So I've tagged, tagged it for the girls. So everything's good to go. And the best thing is it's something large that can leave my workbench. Well, it's probably not the best thing, but you know, it's nice not to have big things cluttering. So this can go in the van today and it can go out to the girls' cafe as soon as they can get out there. Another job done, very happy, turned out pretty easy, but a lot of these jobs are. There's quite often it's just something like a switch or wiring or something that moves a lot that causes a breakage. So qualified technician or helpful dad, you make the call. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.